Good morning. How you doing? Today we want to paint, I'm going to paint this. It looks very colorful, doesn't it? Maybe even too colorful. I don't know. But that's Cross Creek. And it's an area near here where I live. And um, in the video you're about to watch, I talk about Cross Creek a little bit. And I talk about Marjorie Kinnon Rawlings. She's the one who made Cross Creek famous, sort of, kind of, because, I mean, it's not famous, famous like Paris, but it's famous around here because that's where she wrote the book called The Yearling and other books, including Cross Creek, was a book she wrote called Cross Creek. So, um, in the, in the course of this video, I'm going to show you where I got the reference photo from. Robert and I actually drove up there and did a video and I got a screenshot and I'm going to show you that, but right now I want to show you something else. Let me show you how um, Fine Art America AI, the AI, you'll see what I mean, but how it dis describes, how it describes a painting, because I, I f I'm fascinated by this. Um, it doesn't make the painting, although there are programs that make paintings, which I don't like, but hey, it's probably used for it somewhere. All right, so let's go to the screen here, here we go. And let's see, wait, I don't think I did it right. I think I did it wrong. Here we go, now, now it's doing it, okay. It takes me a while sometimes. So this is my Fine Art America page. And um, there it is, Larry Whitler art. It's not called Papa Paints. But these are some of the cards that I put on here so that people can get the prints of them because I can only send the original to one person, obviously, and the prints are so affordable. So there, there are some of them. But I, what I want to do is I want to upload the the new one. So let me find it on here. I'm gonna upload the image. Is it gonna let me do it? Maybe I can't do it while I'm recording it. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna upload the image. And I will find it. I called it Cross Creek um, Crepe Myrtles. Cross Creek Crepe Myrtles, let's see. There it is. All right, so there's the painting. Now let's upload it. Now we're gonna upload the painting. I just wanna show you what it decides to call, not to call it, cause I'm gonna call it Cro Cross Creek Crepe Myrtles or something like that. Only because I have another painting called Cross Creek, which was an, an acrylic on a 16 by 20. But this is a, a greeting card, so. Okay, so now it's uploading. And what I wanna show you is how it describes the painting. And, and I don't type it in there. You can, I'm gonna probably edit it somewhat, but it's interesting to me. And then one of the key things with um, uploading and trying to sell prints is you have to have keywords. It's just the way the world works. You have to have keywords. So what keywords do you pick? Well, you could pick Cross Creek, but who's gonna look for that? You might put river, you might put something broader than Cross Creek, but you could put Cross Creek also. All right, let's see, it's doing its thing. It's 50, okay, now it's there. Okay, now let me, let me put it in, let me put the title in, Cross Creek, Crepe Myrtles. Crepe Myrtles. And it is gouache. Gouache is the medium I'm using. Now let's look at what the AI did. AI said it was a river. These are the keywords. River, greenery, flowers, water reflection, vibrant colors, serene, tranquil, depth, landscape, and flora. So I'm going to add to those keywords. I'm going to put Cross Creek just in case somebody's looking for it by name. And then also crepe myrtles. Even though I didn't really do a great job painting crepe myrtles, I just kind of hinted at the color. Now let's look at the description. This is the interesting thing. It says vibrant colors bring to life a serene river scene flanked by lush greenery and dotted with blooming flowers. The reflection of the flora on the water's surface adds depth and tranquility to the composition. Wow. 
this is a pink thing I'm going to add to it um, based on a reference photo from Cross Creek, Florida. Okay, I just added that to it. Now, as long as I'm here, let me identify it as a Papa Paints picture. And it's seven inches by five inches. And I'm going to make the original for sale, even though I'm giving it away. Once I give it away, I'll, I'll change this. Uh, and then it has all these prints that you can buy, which I recommend you just go for the greeting card. <laughs> and then it's got pillows and duvet, which I call a bedspread, a shower curtain, a handbag. Somebody bought a handbag, by the way, the other day from one of mine. Um, anyway, it's got all these different things, notebooks, another handbag, a cup. Oh, it looks nice on a cup. Um, and Christmas ornaments. I can't imagine that. But anyway, here we go. So submit it. And now it's on Facebook, uh, not Facebook, on Fine Art America. And if I go to my page, you'll see it's the newest one on there, on the left side there. All right, let me go back to me on the screen here. All right, so there I am. All right, so I just did that. I just thought that was a fun feature that Fine Art America has to help you decide on what to call your own art. It's kind of cool. But this is the painting. I want to show you how I did that and where I got the reference photo right now. Good morning. I have my coffee. I got my paint and I got my makeshift palette. And today I want to paint a place that I've been to many times. And it's a place that was made famous by Marjorie Kinnon Rawlings. And in her book, Cross Creek, she writes about Cross Creek. And let's see if I can have some quotes from her. She wrote, the sawgrass stood five feet high and was topped with silvery plumes, and the sun struck the blades that made them glitter like glass. Everywhere were green and blue and purple iridescent patches as the breeze shifted the feathers. That's from the book Cross Creek. So today, here's the primary colors, ultramarine blue, blue. Lemon yellow is my yellow and scarlet is my red. So blue, yellow, and red. And they're over here on the palette. There's, um, there's the ultramarine blue, there's the yellow, and there's the red. But I've also, of course, I have white also. White, I always have some white around. When I'm using gouache, you know, if I'm using just plain watercolor, I don't usually use white. Oh, there's a bug on there. Look at that, it's a little bug. Do you see him? Let me push him into the camera. Come on, bug, you're, you're on YouTube. Do you see the bug right there between the green and the blue? Do I need to pull him down more? <laughs> we stick into the brush. There we go. See him? Well, I'm in Florida. Bugs are common around here. I don't know what kind of bug that is. It's a little guy. All right, so we have the primary colors. <laughs> and then I also decided to use mauve, which I just call purple. And where is it? It's over there. And cerulean blue which is this one here. It's a little bit lighter and I'm using it just to kind of cheat a little bit, make it easier on myself is a better way to say that, to, uh, for the sky tones. I just kind of want to make it more colorful. And then this is deep green or green deep is what it's called. And it's right there. Where'd I put it? It's right there. Only because, you know, the three primaries can make all of those. However, I, you know, try to make it easier on myself. I guess that's just the way, you know, you have all these paints available to you when you buy a kit 
And uh, the kit, by the way, is from Master Touch, and it is gouache. And um, so I don't need the tubes in the picture anymore. Where'd the bug go? Where did he go? I don't know where he went, so I'm not gonna worry about it. The other day we had a lizard in the house, a little tiny guy, and, uh, and Robert wanted me to catch him. They're not easy to catch. <laughs> so I caught him with a with a Cool Whip ball. <laughs> yep, caught him with a Cool Whip ball. Oh, and then to make sure he didn't jump out of the cord, because I, you know, I put it on top of him, I caught him in the living room. So to make sure he didn't get out of the cool whip, well, you know what I did? I used a clipboard. A clipboard that has paint all over it. I, I'm looking around to see if I have it in here. I don't think I do. But it's got paint all over it because I have a tendency to use all kinds of things as palettes. Just all kinds of things. So anyway, this place here, Cross Creek, is famous, but you know, it's not really a touristy thing, unless you're a, a, a real book person or a movie person even. Uh, Mary Steenburgen, Mary Steenburgen was in the movie Cross Creek. And I, I was, uh, I never met Mary Steenburgen, but I met some of the other actors from that movie because they did the filming here in Cross Creek, which is not here, here, but it's just down the road. All right, now let's use some of that cerulean blue. I purposely made it very wet just to spread this out. And what I did is I, I did the water and the sky at the same time. Just gonna spread, look how that's, look how that's doing. Whew. Look at that's doing. Yeah, I am intentionally trying to make this one very colorful. Just let that spread. Get some of that darker ultramarine blue up there into the sky. So I'm trying to get this to spread up and that to spread down. Does that make sense? I want this to spread down to the horizon and the water to spread up to the horizon. And keep it all very, very blue, very blue. Yeah, this is a lot of, a lot of water here. So this um, particular place is near where Ma uh, Marjorie Kinnon Rawlings lived. And Robert and I have gone up there no oh, a number of times just to see it, just to learn about it, just to kind of be there. I have a cool story though from when my son was younger so there was a movie made, as I just mentioned, with Mary Steenburgen. And in the movie, they use the, the actual location where Marjorie Kennan Rawlings' home is. And it's still there. It's a, I think it's a national historic site now. I'm not really sure if it's national, whatever it is, but it's, a, it's definitely preserved. And the people who run it are very knowledgeable about Marjorie Kennan Rawlings and about her writings. And so when my son Alex was younger in, in, in grade school, I said to him, let's watch a movie and then I'm going to take you to the place that the movie is about. Because it's really just a short drive from here. So we watched Cross Creek, the movie. And then after afterwards we... Um, drove up there and he got to see for himself the house and I think the thing that fascinated him the most was the water pump the outdoor water pump you know the one that you do by hand <laughs> and uh, I think he really really loved the experience and, and 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 funny thing is about that particular movie is it's free you don't even have to pay for it because it's of local historic significance. So the local library has it in their, you know, their movies you can rent. Now back then, I guess it was a, I guess it was a VHS or whatever. I don't remember. 
I don't think it was a DVD, but it might have been. But that was before streaming services and all that. So, well now I made a mess for myself because I gotta wait for that to dry. I can't do much until it dries. One of the reasons I'm using gouache instead of watercolor is because one of the things she talks about, let me read another quote from her. She says, um, in the fall, the wild myrtle of the swamps was spangled with blue and tall sprays of purple aster dotted the roadsides. Purple aster dotted the roadsides. Then, when the mockingbirds had taken on their autumn song, sweet and broken, like an old man's memories of youth, came the soft and golden days. I'm not sure if that's from the yearling or from Cross Creek. Um, yeah, she also wrote The Yearling, if you didn't know. But I think maybe that's from Cross Creek. But talk, when she's talking about the wild myrtle, I think she's talking about crepe myrtle. And crepe myrtle plants are all over this area. They are really beautiful. And in fact, we have one planted in our yard. But it's a brand new one. So it hasn't started putting out flowers yet. But they grow all over this area, and they're really, really pretty. All right, I'm going to turn off the camera, and I'm going to try this, and I'll be right back. Okay, it's all dry now. All dry. Can move on to the next, the next part. I wanted the sky and the, and the water to have that, that blue, just like that. Perfect. Okay, now let's do the, <laughs> let's do the land. I got some trees over here and obviously it's going to be reflecting into the water and trees over here so basically you're looking at the creek cross creek um flowing into i i don't remember what the lake is i think it's orange lake and um and then the sky so that's that's the idea here so let's just simply put in some really really yellowed down green at first just some yellow down green. There we go. Just, just kind of laying in the, the foundation for this area here. And a lot of this is going to be f flowered plants. Yeah, this is, this is a. Um, from a photograph, Robin and I went, I should show you the clip. Let me show you the clip from this. Hold on. Okay, that was the clip. Yeah, that's, that's where we were. And we were looking out at the, at the same, same scene that we we're painting here. And the whole idea was to I don't know, I'll just take it in. I kind of like the area a lot, you know. There's so much, you know, they say that, you know, Florida is evergreen. It's not really true. We have, we have a winter just like everybody else. And I believe that the day Rob and I went up here was winter. But as you saw in that clip, um, I, I didn't want to uh, keep it that way. I wanted to make it more colorful the way Marjorie Kinnon Rawlings described it. By the way, I'm using a little bit of watercolor now. Just to grab some of these darker tones here. I guess that's black. I'm not really sure what that is. Just kind of get some of that undertone there. That's all going to just kind of show up at the bottom here. Yeah, then we'll add some some color to it. Okay, a little tiny bit. 
All right, that's all I want to do there. Well, let's kind of clean the brush a little bit. I don't want that black to mess up anything. I just wanted to put a few areas right there. All right, now let's take some of this uh, mauve purple and let's, let's wash it down. Get some of these trees in the background to be just a hint so we can see them because you really can't see them. Just a hint of them. Here we go. And the crepe myrtles that grow here are so, there's like multiple colors. I, I think each plant has its own color. I don't think they have multiple colors on one plant, but I'm not an expert on that. Um, I'm clicking around for my reference photo of the crepe myrtles. I'm just drawing a blank here. There we go. So Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings, I went to um, Wikipedia. This is what it says. It says she was born in 1896 on August 8th, 1896. And she died in December 14th, 1953. And uh, if you watch the movie, you see she was from up north. It says here she was born in Washington, D.C. Um, she grew up in the Brooklyn neighborhood. Brooklyn, B-R-O-O-K-L-A-N-D, of Washington, D.C. She attended the University of Wisconsin in Madison. Robin went to the University of Wisconsin. Um, wow, there's a connection there. Uh, let's see. She worked at the YMCA in New York City. And uh, she got married and moved to Louisville, Kentucky, where they wrote for a newspaper, the Courier Journal. What was her husband's name? Charles Rawlings, okay. That's where she gets the Rawlings name from. Uh, Marjorie wrote a syndicated column in Rochester, New York, called Songs of the Housewife. <laughs> in 1928, with a small inheritance from her mother, um, her she and her husband purchased a 72-acre orange grove near Hawthorne, Florida, which is where this is. This is sort of kind of near there, in the settlement named Cross Creek between Orange Lake and Loch Lusa Lake. Okay, well, there is my answer. So the lake that this leads to is either Orange Lake or Loch Lusa Lake. Anyway, isn't that interesting? Let's get back to the painting. If you go into her house, it's um, all, a lot of her books, I guess all of her books are on display. And uh, the work, and her typewriter is on display. You can see the typewriter that she worked on. Isn't that kind of cool? Okay. A little more dabs here. Okay, now. How do you get this really rich green? But not that rich. I'm going to tone it down. Even this over here needs to be toned down. Put some very dark areas here. the light color 
colors. So the crepe myrtle has this, these beautiful colors. It's Rob always compares it to, oh, another plant that she's familiar with from up north that she says doesn't grow here. Oh gosh, now I can't remember what she calls it. Um, oh gosh, I, I saw on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, I'm not gonna, it's not gonna come to me, I don't think. Um, all right, let me kind of fill in some of these blanks here. Get some, some water down here, let's just kind of reflect into the water. Green is a little bit too too green. Well, my phone is making noises. <laughs> um, so yeah, I I was you know tempted to keep this kind of the same colors that we saw that day, but they just were not brilliant enough. I wanted it to reflect what Marjorie Kinnon Rawlings was writing about with the beautiful colors. I have to soften some of that over there. It's a little bit too green. Use that yellow. That's one thing I like about gouache is you can sort of kind of paint over the things that you don't really like. And then we're gonna, we're going to uh, make sure we put some dappled light in here using that yellow. There we go. I think that's starting to look what I, the way I want it to look. Some of the distant, the distant trees. I think the part I'm going to like doing is the, just the actual flowers on these trees. Here we go. Now it's starting to look like something, right? sort of reflect the sunlight in a, such a way that it, it's almost like this little patches of green and patches of blue and patches of yellow. So all of this is up here. stuff in there after we get it all in there. Let's water this down a little bit for back here.
Maybe a little bit more black to that. Again, because it's gouache, I can, I can make, I can intentionally make some mistakes. It's kind of what I'm thinking about doing. these trees so right now it's very very impressionistic mr. Monet very impressive it's a little bit too impressionistic mr. Monet you know, I was thinking about the the poems that we include on these little videos and I was thinking the way that the poets write the poems is very impressionistic. I don't know if impressionism is a word that you use for poetry, but it's very impressionistic, isn't it? When you write poems and you're talking about the, the way the land looks and the feelings you're having. Of course, with art, the feelings you're having do play a role, but they're not so obvious. They're not so obvious. I know, I know young artists, um, I've noticed that you probably have too. Young artists often will actually paint words onto their artwork because they want to be sure that the person looking at the art, this is my thinking, they want to be sure that the person looking at the art um, kind of gets the message rather than letting the art speak for itself. That's what I think. I think that's what happens when you're young. And then as artists grow, as you become an adult, when you're a young artist, you put words. I think I did the same thing, to be honest with you. I can't really remember. But, you know, sometimes it's... What is my phone doing? But just a lot of um, emotion in, in involved in art, whether that art is music or or dance or I don't know. Does culinary art apply here? Okay, well, as you can see, I am really going colorful on this. I am purposefully wanting this to be very, very colorful but at the same time not veering too far from from the colors that are actually there. Especially when you think about what Marjorie Kinner Rawlings was writing. She was writing about the the beauty of the of the land, the beauty of the the swamp actually. It's very swampy there. And yes, you can you can bet your bottom dollar <laughs> that there are alligators in this water. I can't tell you I saw any that day, but you can bet there are alligators in this water. Absolutely. It's just a fact in Florida. Robert and I even saw an alligator in a retention pond, a retention pond along a busy stretch of the highway. Absolutely we did. Not too long ago. And in fact, the local people, when we posted that video on Facebook, they were surprised. They were all saying, what? I walk across that bridge all the time. What? Okay, let me get some white into that yellow. Make it even brighter. I'm starting to have that look of dap of light in the trees. Let's go ahead and add some of that purple because that was the whole idea 
with using purple or mauve. 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 Well, you know, I'm not the expert when it comes to colors. I'm not the expert when it comes to anything. I've said this before. I've learned a lot from you guys. You tell me about the paints. You tell me about the places where painting, I'm painting. I really don't think of this as a tutorial video channel. I really think of this as just a, a way for you and I to kind of hang out, you know? Just a way to have a little group. That's why that's why we have the the Facebook group. Hey, you see what I'm doing here? I'm adding what, what Marjorie Ken Rawlings was talking about with those purples. <laughs> the purples and the reds and I just want to make all these the the colors she was talking about. The key is to get the, the contrast going. I keep going back to the black and the watercolor. I have black in the gouache also, I guess I could use that. All right. So this is kind of a pretty picture, isn't it? It's just got a lot of pretty colors in it. I need to put some vertical lines in there. So I'll do that next. I kind of like it. Kind of like it very watercolory and still you get the idea of what this is. Let me get some of this white and the purple. there would be cypress cypress knees cypress trees and stuff along the edge of the of the river the, the creek cross creek Looks like a, almost looks like fruity pebbles. You know the cereal, fruity pebbles. Almost looks like that. All right, I'm gonna let this dry, and I will be right back. Okay, <laughs> this is decidedly very, very colorful, very colorful, and it's very unlike the actual picture that I was using as a reference photo. As far as color goes, it's not not very representative of the picture but you know what's fun sometimes is to do that just to just to go go ahead and have some fun All right now I want to add some 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 vertical lines just just here and there just maybe a hint of some limbs and I'm going to use the dark and then also some light and then, of course, anything that's up there will be reflected in the water. So let's put some areas here. And I want to make sure when I have something here, like I say, that 
I show some of the light colors also. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do. Let's make sure I get the light and the dark. Some of the reflections. Maybe there's little things along the edge of the river that we can't really identify. There's some deep areas back here. Just give it some more, some more depth. Just kind of have a little bit of fun with it. It's you know, the reference photo is a reference, but it's it's not the, uh, the it's not the um, desire. Is that the desire? Is that a good word? It's not the intent. Is a good word. It's not the intent to um, duplicate the photograph, or in this case, this the uh, screenshot from the video. It's not that. It's not the intent. The intent is to make a nice picture. Look, ultimately, I don't know who this one's going to go to, but ultimately this card is going to be given to somebody. Maybe somebody who is a, a fan of, of literature. Somebody who likes literature, especially local history, maybe. You know, Marjorie Kinney Rawlings is a local, kind of a historical figure from, you know, modern history, I guess you would say, not ancient history. And she certainly has a lot of people who seem to know a lot about her because when you talk about her, everybody has studied her somewhat, which was news to me. I didn't know that until, until I started talking about her. And then once I started talking about her, other people were already familiar with her more so than me. And so they would tell me, and some of them had family members that that worked with her or knew her or or delivered food to her house or, or that kind of stuff, you know? So it's pretty interesting. All right, let's put some, a few light colors down here too, in addition to the dark colors. And probably the best light color right now is yellow. Let's get a lot of yellow going on down here. There's little dots. Little dots to make it more interesting. Something for your eye to go to. Something for your mind to wonder about. Just to give it a little character. Maybe this, maybe this area right here is a little piece of grass that's sticking out. Maybe that's a, maybe that's a marshy area. Maybe that's where the alligator hides. I mean, they do, they do like to hide. They do like to hide in the marshy areas. Think about their existence. They have to hide. In order for an alligator to survive, he has to hide. Because he can't catch prey if the prey sees him, right? He can't catch his food. Unless the food can't see him. So which would you rather be? Would you rather be the bird that's free to fly, but then also you could be the potential food of something? Or would you rather be the carnivore. <laughs> the one who has to hide. The one who has to sneak up on things. The one who has to swoop down from the sky. There are carnivorous birds too, right? Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and use some of this white here. Just hope I don't make a mistake here. A little bit of, 
Let me make that watered down a little bit. Just a little bit of a white. Maybe there's a cypress tree here or something. Maybe there's a few. And then it gets reflected into the water. So I think she was, I think Marjorie Kenner Rawlings was writing about the um, crepe myrtles. And you see crepe myrtles, like I said at the beginning, are all over the area here. And she's right, they are, they're stunningly beautiful. But I bet you there's probably something beautiful everywhere in the world. I don't know why we want to go to Mars. This, it looks like it's just one big empty place. Like there's nothing happening there. Why would anybody want to live there? Just to say you do? I mean, is it just one of those things of bragging, right? I live on Mars. Well, that's not, that's, that's a way to truly be alone and, and sad. Nobody wants to be sad, right? Why do you want to be sad? Why do you intentionally want to be sad? Look at all these colors I'm putting in here. Wow, this is so colorful. I'm just going for the red now, just going for the red. Just putting all kinds of things happening here. You know what's kind of cool on Fine Art America, it will, it has this program when you upload pictures, when you upload artwork, it has this like AI program that um, <laughs> will, will describe the picture it will describe what the picture is. I should show you that. Maybe I'll do that at the end of this one. Yeah. Yeah, before I end this one, I'm going to show you that. Let's just, just try that. Let's just try that. Maybe I'll do it at the beginning. Yeah, I think I'll do it at the beginning because we might not stay till the end. I don't blame you if you don't. I always watch videos haphazardly also. I don't always watch them always from the beginning to the end, but sometimes I do. Sometimes I like to watch them all the way through. You know, I don't know what that would be, but there's something over there. <laughs> I'll just pretend that I know what I'm doing. Just pretend I know what I'm doing. Fake it till you make it, right? You know what they say? Is that a person, maybe? You think that's a person? That could be somebody. Maybe that's a bird. I don't know what that is. Let your imagination tell you what it is. It's kind of cool, though. It's kind of cool having these little white things reflecting into the water. And then some of these illustration y things that make the water look like it has a little bit more ripple going on in it. Whoops, that's not a good color. Whoa, that's not good. What's the thing Bob Ross always says? Oh, he used to say happy accidents, right? Happy accidents. Happy accidents. All right, a little bit of white now, come on. Come on, white. Put a couple of little lines here. Let's just have a couple of lines. Just put some there. Maybe even back there is a few. All right, I think I'm done. Well, there we go. 
It's very, very colorful. I think I am happy about this one. Hmm. Let me fold it. I think it's dry enough to fold. There's a couple of wet spots, but I think I can fold it. What do you think? Let's see what it looks like as a card. <laughs> it is definitely um, impressionistic. But there it is. There's our impressionistic greeting card painting of Cross Creek. Thank you, Marjorie Kinnon Rawlings, for even allowing me to know about this place. All right. I'll see you later.